Out front tonight, the breaking news. An administration official telling CNN moments ago that the White House asked former White House counsel Don McGahn to state publicly that President Trump did not obstruct justice. The New York Times reporting that Team Trump asked McGahn not once, but twice. The requests coming after the White House saw the Mueller report, which said that Trump had ordered his then White House counsel, Don McGahn, to fire Bob Mueller. Now, McGahn turned the president down then and in this request to publicly say that wasn't obstruction of justice. McGahn is crucial to all of this. He, of course, was the White House counsel. He was one of Bob Mueller's key witnesses, mentioned more than 500 times in the Mueller report, more than any other witness in the entire document. And according to Mueller's reporting, Trump ordered McGahn to fire Mueller, which, of course, is a request the president has publicly denied making. I never told Don McGahn to fire Mueller. If I wanted to fire Mueller, I would have done it myself. Pamela Brown is out front live outside the White House. Pamela, what are you learning this hour? Well, we're learning more about the White House reaction to the episodes laid out in Robert Mueller's report about former White House counsel Don McGahn and the president's request to him to dismiss the special counsel. In fact, we've learned uh, through sources familiar with this matter, Aaron, that the White House reached out to Don McGahn's lawyer, William Burke, asking Burke to ask his client, Don McGahn, to come out and say that the president's directive to fire the special counsel Robert Mueller was not obstruction of justice. And that Don McGahn uh, rebuffed that request. Now, a source familiar with this matter says one of the factors in that uh, was because Bill Barr, the attorney general, had already come out and said that publicly, not only in that four-page letter saying that he didn't believe the president obstructed justice, but also in the press conference that he held uh, just before the release of the Mueller report. And so the, the calculation was made uh, um, uh, among Don McGahn and his attorney that it wasn't uh, necessary. That was one of the factors, I'm told by a source familiar of why McGahn didn't do it. Now, the White House was aware that Don McGahn had told the special counsel during his more than 30 hours of interviews that McGahn did not believe that the president obstructed justice through his actions. And so it appears, Aaron, that the White House wanted McGahn to then come out and publicly say that to help squelch some of the fallout uh, from the report. But again, uh, McGahn decided not to do that. And also part of the calculation was that the president tweeted directing right at McGahn, as you'll remember, right after the report's release the next day, saying that asking why people are taking notes and so forth. And so at that point, it really became moot for McGahn to ever come out and make any sort of statement. But it's interesting to note that this is coming out now because, in effect, the White House is getting what it wanted, uh, getting it out there that McGahn had told the special counsel that he didn't believe the president obstructed justice. Joining us uh, to discuss this, the former U.S. attorney, Preet Bharara. He's now a CNN senior legal analyst. He's also the author of the new best-selling book, Doing Justice, A Prosecutor's Thoughts on Crime, Punishment, and the Rule of Law. An excellent new book. Preet, thanks so much for joining us. Let me get your reaction Sorry. to this new reporting from the Wall Street Journal. In fact, let me read the first two sentences, uh, and then we'll, we'll discuss. Uh, this is from the Wall Street Journal. Within a day of the release of the Mueller report last month, President Trump sought to have former White House counsel Don McGahn declare he didn't consider the president's 2017 directive that he seek Robert Mueller's dismissal to be obstruction of justice, but Mr. McGahn rebuffed the request, according to people familiar with the matter. Uh, the, second, the second sentence in the article, Mr. Trump has publicly denied asking Mr. McGahn to fire the Russia probe special counsel since the release of the report in which Mr. Mueller detailed that directive and a subsequent request by Mr. Trump that Mr. McGahn deny that conversation ever happened. Quote, if I wanted to fire Mueller, I didn't need McGahn to do it. I could have done it myself, Mr. Trump tweeted last month. This is very dramatic. What's your reaction, Preet? So I have a few reactions. In some ways, it's surprising. Seems like an odd move. Literally within 24 hours of the, you know, fairly dramatic and detailed and thorough Mueller report being released, but it's, it's par for the course, not, not to use a golf metaphor for, for President Trump. Uh, in fact, in the, in the report itself that talks about in volume two, talks about the exchanges between Donald Trump and his lawyer, uh, the White House lawyer, uh, Don McGahn, there's a whole discussion of how he had asked Don McGahn to basically get rid of uh, Bob Mueller, and Don McGahn didn't do that. And then when uh, the stories leaked out about that exchange between him and Don McGahn in the New York Times and elsewhere, 
Donald Trump tried to get McGahn to say that those facts weren't true, that he hadn't used the word fired and, and to dispute the facts, and Don McGahn refused to do so, to do so there as well. So on the one hand, uh, it seems so nuts, <laughs> I, I hate to use that word, that you have a person who has been painted in a bad light, the president, for trying to get people to bend to his will and to say things that, were, uh, that are exonerating of him because he cares about exoneration, and to do the very same thing that was set out and set forth in the Mueller report the day after the Mueller report comes out. It also, by the way, is in some ways you know, worse than what happened with respect to the, to the factual allegations that he tried to get Don McGahn uh, to recant with respect to the reporting, because here he was asking Don McGahn, the former White House counsel, to make a legal conclusion about obstruction. So you know, it's, it's a bad look. I don't know why he went about doing it. And, it's, and it certainly looks bad that Don McGahn rebuffed him. Now, if you go on to read the article, which I only looked at you know, 90 seconds before uh, I came on air, uh, McGahn's lawyer says a very diplomatic thing, uh, and I know him well, and he's a smart lawyer and maybe the best position to take. He said, look, they didn't take it as a threat, uh, and they thought it was a, a, a professional, I don't have the language in front of me, uh, a professional and polite request, seeking to put some kind of gloss on it that it wasn't you know, something awful and nefarious. But in light of all the other things that have gone on, um, I think it was, a, it was a poor move, and I, th and I think looks not good. There's more details now coming in uh, from the New York Times, which has not only matched the Wall Street Journal report, but has additional details as well. Uh, let me read a few sentences from the New York Times story that was just posted. White House officials asked at least twice in the past month for the key witness against President Trump in the Mueller report, uh, Donald F. McGahn II, to say publicly that he never believed the president obstructed justice. According to two people briefed on the request, Mr. McGahn, who was the president's first White House counsel, declined. One of the people said his reluctance angered Mr. Trump, who believed Mr. McGahn showed disloyalty by telling investigators for the special counsel, Robert Mueller, about Mr. Trump's uh, attempts to maintain control over the Russia investigation. And pre listen to this. This is from the New York Times. The White House made one of the requests to Mr. McGahn's lawyer, William A. Burke, before the Mueller report was released publicly, but after the Justice Department gave a copy to Mr. Trump's lawyers to read. Reading the report, the president's lawyers saw that Mr. Mueller had left out that Mr. McGahn had told investigators that he believed Mr. Trump never obstructed justice. Uh, so these are more details, not just once, but twice yeah. making that request to McGahn, but twice being rebuffed. Yeah, look, it's, it, it, I, I stand by the comments I made a couple of minutes ago, that this is a president who tries to get everyone to see things his way. Uh, I don't know that the very the, the mere fact that he was trying to do that constitutes some you know, further offense. Um, but, you know, but it comes close to the, to, the, to the line, given the authority that he has and given the reputational impact he can have on someone because of how he tweets and sort of generalized threats that he has made about people uh, who he thinks are going to say bad things about him and whether or not they can get further jobs and everything else. I, I, I'm not saying it is this, but, it, but it's, you know, it smacks a little bit of, of witness tampering. I'm not saying that it's witness tampering, but it's the kind of thing that you have to be very, very careful about. And this president doesn't have a lot of carefulness about him with respect to any of this. What's important to him is to get as many people as possible to say he did nothing wrong, even when the facts show otherwise. We, we know from the Mueller report, the all 400 plus pages, that the president told McGahn to fire the special counsel, Robert Mueller, and that he didn't fire the special counsel. The president asked McGahn to deny a report that the president told McGahn to fire Mueller. McGahn once again refused. Uh, what do you make of that? And how significant would McGahn's testimony in an open session of Congress turn out to be? I think the testimony would be very significant um, because you'll be hearing the, the Q&A you know, in, in flesh and blood. Uh, and there'll be the possibility of follow-up questions and a little bit more details about the conversations uh, could be gone into. How significant is it? I think it's quite significant. Now, you know, you use the term fired, and I've seen now both the Attorney General of the United States and the President's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, say all sorts of things to try to explain that away. I mean, the Bill Barr has said, quite cleverly, I think, that the fact that Donald Trump wanted Bob Mueller gone, uh, and that the reason he wanted Bob Mueller gone, or at least the, the, pre the pretextual reason that he put forward, and to my mind pretextual, was that Bob Mueller had some conflicts that his own lawyers told him were silly and ridiculous and didn't make any sense and there were no conflicts. Bill Barr's argument is that if, that if the president wanted uh, Bob Mueller gone on that basis, he wasn't interfering with an investigation or obstructing any investigation because the assumption would be Bob Mueller leaves because of the conflicts and then some other special counsel will be put in his place. So that could not possibly mean or intend to have meant the end of the investigation. I think that's a nice and interesting gloss to put on it after the fact. I think everyone understands 
from the president's words, actions, and more actions that we're hearing about in real time as we do this broadcast, uh, that he wanted the investigation over. It wasn't just that he wanted Bob Mueller gone. He wanted the investigation over. And I think the testimony that, 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 uh, that McGahn will give about that is incredibly important for people to hear.